The Shining Sarcophagus Archetype are a series of cards based on iconic monsters and moments used by Yugi when he dueled without the Pharaoh by his side. With the central card to the archetype being the Shining Sarcophagus itself. The cards first released in the 2024 pack Legacy of Destruction. In a way, you could say this deck is the true modern day version of Yugi's original deck. As opposed to the near two dozen decks his deck has spun off into in the modern day for each of his individual monsters. And if you think I'm over exaggerating, you really want to check this video out. The way the deck works is that all of the cards in the archetype revolve around their core card, Shining Sarcophagus. It has the effect, it cannot be destroyed by monster effects. During your main phase, you can add one card that mentions Shining Sarcophagus from your deck to your hand except another of itself. If your opponent special summons a monster from the graveyard, you can discard one spell card, target one of those monsters, send it to the grave. We have a ton of references with this card. First of all, if it wasn't obvious, this card is based on Gold Sarcophagus, which was the card Yugi used to defeat the Pharaoh with, which itself is the card form version of the mystical golden box that the Millennium Puzzle arrived in, making it only fitting that this box the Pharaohs brought into the world with would be the same one to eventually send him back to the afterlife with. That golden box, it has a kind of glow. You're right, this box is very special. Now interestingly, the real world and the anime version of gold sarcophaguses both have different effects, but both of their effects are referenced in the new Shining Sarcophagus. For instance, in the real world, Gold Sarcophagus had the effect Banish one card from your deck face up. During your second standby phase after this card's activation, add that card to the hand. This effect is referenced in this card's first effect to add any Shining Sarcophagus card from your deck to your hand. In the anime, Gold Sarcophagus's effect was you could remove from play one card from your deck face down. If your opponent activates or summons a card of the same name during the duel, you can reveal the removed card to negate the activation or summon of that card and destroy it. This graveyard denial is referenced in this card's second effect. The cost of discarding a spell to use the effect alludes to how Yugi defeated the Pharaoh by sealing his Monster Reborn spell inside the box which is itself a metaphor for Yugi letting go of the Pharaoh, denying revival from the graveyard in order for his friend to go to the afterlife. This is something that is also referenced in the Dark Side of Dimensions duel. Yugi gives him the Monster Reborn as a reference to say, look, I'm not bringing the Pharaoh back. You take my Monster Reborn because I ain't bringing anything back from the graveyard here. Because in the manga, Kaiba never witnessed the final duel, so we never got closure. Now, as for the other iconic Yugi cards that have been transformed into shining versions of themselves, identifiable by their new golden accented designs and shiny sparkles in the background, well, we have a lot of new effects to go over. So, let's go through each one, see what iconic monster they are based on, and what accompanying support card supports them. Let's start first with Dark Magician. This card got upgraded into Dark Magician, the Magician of Black Magic. This card's name becomes Dark Magician while in the monster zone. If Shining Sarcophagus is on the field, you can special summon this card from the hand. If this card is destroyed by card effect and a level five or higher monster is on the field, you can special summon this card. Then you can set one spell or trap from your deck that mentions Dark Magician. Now, some of you might be saying, well, this card is more of the Pharaoh's card. So why is it a part of Yugi's Shining Sarcophagus deck? Well, it's actually because after the end of the series, Yugi re-added this card to his deck, which is what we see in the Dark Side of Dimensions. Now, thanks to the Dark Magician, the Magician of Black Magic's effect, it can search and set a very specific card in the deck face down. A card that pairs extremely well with it, and as well, it is an upgraded version of Yugi's iconic Mirror Force trap, and that card is Dark Magic Mirror Force. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, or an opponent's monster's effect is activated that would destroy a monster on the field, and a monster that mentions Shining Sarcophagus is on the field, the first time each monster you control that mentions Shining Sarcophagus would be destroyed by battle or card effect for the rest of this turn. After this card resolves, it is not destroyed. 
also destroy as many opponents attack position monsters as possible. Then if you control Dark Magician, inflict 500 damage to them for each monster destroyed. Fun fact! The way you activate this card is how the anime and manga versions of Mirror Force work. The anime version activates upon being attacked, while the manga version also activates when an effect that would destroy activates, but that effect is treated like an attack. For example, Yami Yugi defends himself in the manga from Gandora's board destruction effect with his Mirror Force, since Gandora's effect is treated like an attack. In fact, the scene depicted in this card's artwork is what this is from, Gandora's destruction ability being negated by Mirror Force. The damaging effect in this card comes from how Mirror Force worked during the Duelist Kingdom arc. Back then, Duelist Kingdom had a rule that if a monster was destroyed via a card effect, well, the owner of that monster would take a portion of its attack points as damage. The most notable example is when Weevil attacks into Yugi's Mirror Force. His monsters are destroyed and he takes a portion of the damage from the monsters. So it's not technically a Mirror Force effect, but it's a consequence of Mirror Force being used during a certain era. If you wanted to revamp a bunch of different cards from that era, if they appeared in Duelist Kingdom and they could destroy a card, just give them a little bit of a burn effect, if you want to. Summon the Skull. This card got upgraded into Archfiend's Advent. While you control a Shining Sarcophagus, you can normal summon this card without tributing. Other monsters you control gain 500 attack during your turn only. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one monster your opponent controls, take control of it until the end phase. But that monster cannot attack unless you controlled Shining Sarcophagus when this effect was activated. This monster is a weird one. An iconic monster used by Yugi, the Summoned Skull. Makes sense to have it in the archetype. However, its new retrained effects, I don't know what their reference is to. Boosting other monsters' attacks and taking control of an opponent's monster. If you guys have any idea what this could be derived from, could be from like a synchro version or something from the manga or possibly from one of the later series or something. Logically, it would have made sense to give this monster the effect of Makiyu the Magical Mists, which was able to destroy monsters, but it also did boost Summon Skull's effect depending on when it was used kind of thing. So I guess they could have given it that ability, but for the time being, let me know in the comment section below if you know. Gandora, the Dragon of Destruction. This card got upgraded into Gandora G, the Dragon of Destruction. Gains 300 attack for each banished card. If you control Shining Sarcophagus, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can pay half your life points, destroy as many other cards on the field as possible. And if you do, banish them, then special summon one level seven or lower monster that mentions Shining Sarcophagus from your deck and increase its level by the number of cards destroyed by this effect. Its effect to special summon a level seven or lower monster comes from a play that occurred during the anime. It was where Yugi wipes his and Bakura's field with this monster's effect, which triggers the effect of Spirit Sword of Sealing, which returns Silent Swordsman back to the field, which neatly its second effect plays into perfectly, as the new silent cards in this archetype benefit greatly from having their levels increased after they are summoned. In fact, speaking of, Silent Magician level 4. This got upgraded into Silent Magician 0. If your opponent draws a card, increase this card's level by the number drawn. While this card's level is higher than its original level, it gains attack equal to the difference times 500. When your opponent activates a spell card or effect while you control Shining Sarcophagus, Quick effect, you can negate the activation, and if you do, increase this card's level by one. This monster pairs really well with its accompanying support card, which it appears in the artwork of, albeit its older version form. Future Silence. Its effect is add one monster that mentions Shining Sarcophagus from your deck to your hand. Then, if you activated this during the battle phase while you control Shining Sarcophagus and a monster and a monster that mentions it, each player draws until they have six cards in their hand. Future Silence is based on Card of Sanctity. Both cards let you draw until each player holds six cards. Future Silence's artwork as well is actually based on the scene where Yugi uses Card of Sanctity during Atem's battle phase. Silent Magician rapidly evolved into its more powerful form thanks to this card's effects. The paramour to Silent Magician is of course 
Silent Swordsman. Silent Swordsman level 3. This got upgraded into Silent Swordsman 0. Once per turn during the standby phase, increase this card's level by 1. While this card's level is higher than its original level, it gains attack equal to the difference times 500. When your opponent activates a card or effect that targets Shining Sarcophagus, or a monster that mentions it that you control, quick effect, you can negate the activation, and if you do, increase this card's level by 1. This monster pairs extremely well with its accompanying card, which it itself appears in the artwork for, but the older version of it. Turn Silence. Target one face of monster you control, increase its level by 3. Also, if you activated this card in response to your opponent's monster effect activation, while you control Shining Sarcophagus and a monster that mentions it, negate that opponent's effect. During damage calculation, if your monster that mentions Shining Sarcophagus battles, you can banish this card from your graveyard, end the battle phase. Turn Silence, by the way, is based on Turn Jump since both of these cards allow Silent Swordsman to grow by three levels. This play was actually seen used in both of Yugi's duels, one against Bakura and the other against the Pharaoh. Green Gadget, Red Gadget, Yellow Gadget. These three cards got combined and upgraded into Gadget Trio. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one Shining Sarcophagus or one Spell or Trap that mentions it from your deck to your hand. If this card is destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can set one Stronghold the Hidden Fortress from your deck. This monster pairs extremely well with its accompanying support card, Stronghold the Hidden Fortress. Special summon this card as an effect monster, with the following effects. Also, it's still a trap. Gains 1000 attack for each Shining Sarcophagus, a monster that mentions it that you control. Once per turn, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, while you control Shining Sarcophagus, you can destroy that monster. Now this card is based on Stronghold the Moving Fortress, another of Yugi's cards that he used against the Pharaoh. Interestingly, this card can also serve as a boss monster for the archetype, as since it gains a thousand attack for each Shining Sarcophagus and monster that mentions it you can control, this card can have a lot of attack points. In fact, there's more. To get the three gadgets out together, Yugi used the card Ties of the Brethren, which, guess what, has its own Shining Sarcophagus variant. It's known as Ties That Bind. If you control Shining Sarcophagus and a monster that mentions it, special summon up to two level four or lower monsters with different names that mention Shining Sarcophagus from your hand or deck. Also, for the rest of this turn, after the card resolves, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck. Now, the Ties of the Bind and the Ties of the Brethren, this is just a theory, but they might be playable versions of the Ties of Friendship. Which, fun fact, was the card that Yugi won for winning Duelist Kingdom. What happened to it? He gave it to Rebecca Hawkins as a sign of their friendship. Marshmallow and Marshmallow Glasses. These cards got combined and upgraded into more Marshmallow. While you control Shining Sarcophagus, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. Also, your opponent's monsters cannot target monsters for attacks except this one. During your opponent's turn, if you control Shining Sarcophagus, quick effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is destroyed by card effect, you can special summon one more Marshmallow from your hand, deck, graveyard, or banishment except this card. And if you do, 1000 damage to your opponent. That sounds weirdly worded, but it just means you can't banish the same more marshmallow when it's banished. You have to get a different one, basically. This monster's effect that prevents itself from being destroyed by a battle is, of course, based on the first effect of marshmallow, while its effect to inflict 1000 damage to the opponent is based on the second effect of marshmallow. This monster's effect that prevents the opponent's monsters from targeting other monsters for attacks is based on the effect of marshmallow glasses, which is a card you used against Bakura. The monster's effect to special summon another copy of itself when it's destroyed is actually based on the effect of Marsh Macaron, another counterpart of Marsh Milan. It's at this point I'd like to point out how a lot of the cards in this archetype have game-winning potential. Gandora can wipe the field and gain attack for every banished card. Silent Swordsman and Silent Magician can get insane attacks by having their levels boosted. And the same can be said for the Stronghold Trap. That's a lot of attack points for a trap monster. Overall, I'd say the strength of this deck is its versatility, something that Yugi himself was famed for. And guess what? With that, that is the entirety of the Shining Sarcophagus archetype done. Technically, it's a series, 
but I'm calling it archetype anyway because it's just better for the title. I definitely think there's going to be more support cards. There's so many more cards that we still need to see. What other iconic solo Yugi card would you like to see added to this archetype? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you'd like to watch Yugi solo dueling, I have a video of me analyzing it right here. But other than that, thank you all for watching. Catch you later.